nice thing about being his president is I control the clock. <laughs> <laughs> He hasn't well, started it yet. I haven't started it, and I don't know if I will. Um, <laughs> I met Ricky Mills while deer hunting over 20 years ago. He was a U.S. Army Ranger, Special Forces. Uh, he was a Special Forces uh, officer who was in, in Germany and returned to Elbridge, New York, where he grew up to hunt regularly. He joined the Army at 19 out of high school. He was much younger then. He was all full of himself. He was self-centered. Everything was all about him. <laughs> and then he died. Ricky was involved in an auto accident in 2007 and, and was flatlined. No sign of life. Through the grace of God, he was revived and came back to life. Ricky says that experience changed his life. After retiring from the Army, Ricky had to rebuild himself. He knew what it was like to be disabled, homeless, living in an abandoned building with just enough money to survive. He was able to build a small sporting goods business off the military base in Germany, which eventually became a successful enterprise. Soldiers from the base would come visit the store, really not wanting to buy things, but because they knew Ricky would listen to them and try to help them with their problems. He would say, if you don't have any friends and need someone to talk to, come by the store after it closes on one of the weeknights and, we'll, and, and shoot a ball with other veterans. Ricky would listen and try to get them help. He would organize hunts to, uh, to help the veterans cope and listen to their stories. When Ricky moved back to central New York, he founded, he co-founded Wild Jaeger Veteran Adventures a 501c3 not-for-profit organization to help veterans. Wild Jaegers is a company of veterans committed to fellow veterans. <clears throat> His goal and mission was simple, strive to reach as many veterans as possible and allow meaningful connections between veterans and nature to occur. He strongly believes that connecting veterans to other veterans in outdoor activities like hunting and fishing can help heal the wounds that are seen or not seen. Ricky now lives in Camillus, New York. He hosts veterans at his house, uh, taking them hunting and fishing. He says while sitting with them in a turkey blind or boat for eight hours, you can really get someone to open up and discuss their problems. He helps them fill out forms to get medical and financial help. An example of one of these veterans was a young man he was found in a Walmart parking lot in Syracuse. The police called Ricky and said, this guy is a veteran. He is drunk and sleeping in his car. He's homeless. Either you come get him or we're going to arrest him. So Ricky spent the next week with Chance at his house. At 20 something years old, he had gone through combat tour after tour and had done and seen all that goes with that. The scars of that is why he was living the way he was. He had never been fishing in his life, so Ricky took him fishing, and he, and he caught his first fish ever on Nine Mile Creek between Camillus and Marcellus, New York. Ricky is a prime example of what a volunteer inductee into the New York State Outdoorsman Hall of Fame should be, changing the lives of veterans through hunting and fishing. Ricky does make a difference. Ricky, you want to come up? Steve on that, so if I get a little emotional, I do have a traumatic brain injury, so I do have some emotional things going on. So, uh, thank you, Stephen, uh, for getting a hold of me and making this happen. I've been told to keep this short, so if anyone would like any more information on me or what we're doing to get veterans in, out, in the outdoors in New York, you can find my and my partner John McCollum, who's back there at the table information on the flyers and business cards that were handed out the table. Everybody should have three of these on your table.
and feel free to approach me if you need if you want a business one of my business cards so that we can coordinate getting veterans in the outdoors if you're running goose hunts if you're running turkey hunts we we have the veterans we just need more more land more access to land and more less access to animals when Stephen contacted me to let me know that he wanted to su submit my name for the New York State Outdoors and Hall of Fame, I did not know what to think. Other than there were many outdoorsmen out there doing bigger and better things than me that probably deserve this recognition more than I did. The first thought that came to my mind was that I could use this event to promote our not-for-profit veteran support organization, Wild Digger Veteran Adventures. My second thought was to recognize some of the many amazing individuals at this event today that could or should be standing at this podium also. The Lord is preparing you for what he has prepared for you. I live by that. Let me first say that I would not change my life till now if I could. The many trials and tribulations of tribu have helped build my character into what it is today. As I have told my four children many times, character is the measure of a man. The Lord's challenges and rewards, trials and tribulations, build that character, brick by brick. So that Jesus, so that, so thank you Jesus for the life I have lived so far. I thank my father and mother, brother and aunt who are here today. And I think that they would all agree that I spent a lot of my childhood in New York's outdoors. I grew up in Elbridge, New York on Halfway Road, less than a mile from the Carbonsburg Fish Hatchery. My youth was filled with riding bikes, tackle football, hide and seek, and exploring the fish hatchery and the surrounding outdoors. From there, I remember when I went to the recruiter, army recruiter at the Syracuse Meps, just after high school at 19 years old, and I looked at the recruiter and said, I want to jump out of planes and I want to be in the woods, a lot. <laughs> the 20 years I spent in the US Army is a testament to achieving both those goals. Everything happens for a reason. As a teenager, the Lord put John McCollum, in my life, I went to school with John's sister, my father, and John's father served in the Syracuse Sheriff's Department together. We lived literally three miles down the railroad tracks from each other. People say that, but it literally <laughs> three miles down the railroad tracks from each other. I joined the Army and John joined the Navy. A little over 20 years later, our paths crossed again, and we started Wild Jaeger together, which was our for-profit business, representing American hunting products across the pond in Europe. And at one point, 35 different countries and in over 27 different languages. We were on contract with partner companies like Remington Arms Company out of Central New York, Moultrie Gam Cameras, Summit Tree Stands, companies that we all in the outdoors know well. I think we were both proud to be a part of something bigger than ourselves, even in that endeavor. We were helping American brands and products increase their sales internationally. Through the twists and turns that life threw at me, my near-death experience at, 30, at the age of 37, being forced into retirement at 39, and everything that followed those two life-changing events. It was John's words as he looked me in the eyes, one man, one veteran, one brother to another, and said, Rick, I'm not leaving you. That kept me together many times when I was falling apart. Veterans need a rock. And I was lucky to have men like Mark Bayless, who's in the audience today. You can introduce yourself to him later. John McCollum, and many more that would not quit on me. They helped me restore faith in the loyalty between men and to start turning some, trusting some men again. Excuse me. I believe that John and I built Wild Jagger Veteran Adventures to be a starting place for many veterans to find and build more rocks in their lives, to start rebuilding that solid foundation that many had lost somewhere during or after their military service. 
if you are comfortable where you are in life or what you are doing in life, you are probably not trying hard enough. At this point in my Christian journey, I seek out the uncomfortable. This is where you can make the most difference. The words, who will go? Send me. Or my watchwords. My wife and I attend the Syracuse Vineyard Church, initially with John Elmer at the State Fair site, and now we're on the south side helping Pastor Charles Fielder and his wife Dawn, who are in our audience today, uh, start a church down on the south side of Syracuse, where it's much needed. My wife and I still sit and sleep on furniture in our house that was donated to us from Mark Bayless's Valor Clinic Foundation. When we moved back from Europe, we didn't bring anything back with us. Our house was empty. We were sleeping on the floor, basically. And Mark rushed a Penske truck up with the bed we sleep in now, the couch we sit on at night, the end tables that we still use. Donated veteran furniture. Thank you to Mark and Glenn Livicott for changing my life forever through their Veterans Unstoppable Clinic back in 2018 and setting the example for us to follow here in Central New York. I would encourage anyone here to stop and speak with Mark about Valor and how we can invite uh, Valor to Syracuse in the future and get a branch working up here, which I would love to be a part of. I am slowly becoming an active member in the Camilla Elks Lodge. Thank you, Don Fittipaldi, Rocco, and Steve for attending. We're also in our audience. John and I hope to expand Wild Digger Veteran Adventures deeper into the central New York area, New York State, the East Coast, and further across the United States of America. I will be teaching a turkey hunting class to the Women in Nature organization on 4 May and hope to start helping teach the New York State hunter safety classes between beginning this fall if I'm not in Colorado hunting elk. If you are doing something that you can achieve in your lifetime, you are probably not thinking big enough. There will always be a need to help vineyard, the Vineyard Church grow and bring more people to Christ. Hopefully I can be a part of getting more church members fishing and in the outdoors of Central New York. The Camillus Elks Lodge will be there a long time after I'm gone, and I hope to continue to serve veterans there and work on programs at the lodge that get lodge members outdoors doing positive things. Hopefully, Wild Jigger Veteran Adventures and Valor will continue to serve veterans in the state of New York long time after I'm gone. The outdoors is an integral part of that healing process. Last page. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Again, I personally would not change one thing about the 35 years of my life. The good, the bad, and the ugly of life have made me into the man that I am today. The Lord has a plan and a purpose for everyone. I finally know my purpose. Helping veterans heal from the wounds seen and unseen and getting them back on their feet and in the outdoors. It is the testimonies of my life that I can share with other men, Christians, veterans, that allows me to gain their trust needed to maybe start a positive change in their lives. I humbly thank the Lord for the ability to continue to serve wherever and in whatever capacity Jesus leads me toward. The great outdoors of New York is a large part of that journey. It's not my path, it's the Lord's path for me. I just picked one foot up at a time and moved forward down that path. God puts people in on that path that either I am supposed to learn something from or that I'm supposed to be charitable with in some way. Duty is ours. The results are God's. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.